Cowboy Jim, Fort McMurray, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you'll make her through to the end of the video. Jeez, that would be nice. So, um, I saw a thing today um, uh, about Poland. And uh, the Polish government has uh, produced um, a teaching uh, booklet or book. It, it, it looked like fairly long. Uh, it, it looked like about 20, 30 pages anyways. And, and uh, what the booklet was about was a, um, a tutorial uh, for the Polish people to understand how they could prepare um, for war, how they could prepare uh, to to be invaded uh, by Russia. And I'm not sure that it's, it's in Russia in particular, but I think that kind of goes without being said. And um, what, what would the rationale be for uh, um, teaching uh, your people, uh, were you in government, teaching your people um, the things they would need to know in order to sustain, uh, survive an initial invasion. And so that uh, book, uh, written in Polish, I suppose, uh, wouldn't be English, um, but it delineated very clearly uh, what the people uh, needed to do in order to evacuate quickly and in order to have a game plan and understanding, uh, not that this is going to happen, but it's kind of like our first aid courses that, that up here in Fort Mac we all take, and that is uh, to be prepared. Um, not to live in fear, lest uh, something untoward happen, were we as a people to do that, well, we wouldn't do anything. We would stay inside and hide, kind of like what we were taught over the COVID thing. Stay inside. I mean, you don't want to go outside. But anyways, it's, that's in the past, hopefully. Hopefully it will not raise its hoary head again, but you you just, you just, nowadays, I mean, Jay, uh, it, it seems as though it may well be easier to lead a people who are in fear than to lead a people who are in confidence, uh, of what they themselves can do. And and um, isn't that kind of like what we were taught since we were kids? Um, there uh, is no free lunch. And uh, if you wish to make it in the world, you better ascertain what it will take to, to make it and how and what you're going to do. Well, and, and very much... Uh, 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 grave similarity here. So, I mean, uh, well, I guess the Ukrainian people, uh, they'd been kind of thinking since the Crimea, Crimea was taken from them uh, since about 2014 uh, that Russia was pretty strong on coveting their country, their oil wells, um, Zulinsky said um, Russia had covered it, coveted their wells. And I wondered about that. And then I realized uh, uh, Ukraine is oil rich. And, uh, and so they, they do have a target on their back. Now, I'm not sure about Poland, but Poland went to great trouble to do this booklet. I wished I had an English version of that. I wished I could understand. Like, we have a vague idea um, of what we should do in order to... Uh, oh, there it is, right? Now. It says, Poland Publishes Guide 
on preparing for invasion. Think about that, children. Think about what would it mean to, to your family were we to be invaded? Uh, well, it, it just seems improbable. Like, really, it does. Um, but to some people in the Ukraine, they were going about their business with uh, 110 to 150,000 Russian soldiers parked all along the Russian-Ukrainian border. And they were surprised because how, how can, nowadays, how can uh, one country aggressively uh, try to take over another country? I mean, we, we live in uh, uh, what we would like to believe is an enlightened world. And yet there are those who, through their aggression, through their bullying, through their way that they look at the value of people's lives, Ukraine was inv was invaded, and now we we're watching uh, the resultant horrors that are associated with war, and not just like normal. Uh, war, but associated with a power that holds life as being worthless. And so the Polish government, they are in the process of educating their people. And I hope the people can accept the education without falling into the morass of, of fear. Um, I, I heard a lady, a nutritionist type lady, bodybuilder, and she did uh, an expose on fear. And she was not wrong. I mean, she, she was pretty much on the money. Um, she put forth the idea that fear was the root of all evil. I changed that a little bit. I asked her about it too. I said, what, what, what happens when your ideas uh, uh, don't, don't quite line up with how I see the, the same thing? And uh, the one thing that my mother taught me, <laughs> and she didn't tell me, uh, but she taught me, uh, by example, um, is that uh, a woman's uh, mental acuity is just a little bit sharper uh, by a country mile than the same thought process that a man would normally retain. Anyways, okay. Uh, she said, uh, if two people are sitting at a table and uh, the one writes uh, on a piece of paper between them and she she draws, delineates a six. She said to the person sitting across, that six, though it is a six, also appears to be a nine. And she said, so not a hardship to sort out the differences. And, and I... I uh, I, I would gladly take my hat off for that little girl um, because, because she saw very clearly what, what I, I was asking and had a, an answer that I won't ever forget. And uh, so the Polish government is educating their people on how to have a game plan, a game plan for the quite possible 
uh, invasion of Poland. I have said for a while, I, 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 I said, I, I didn't think uh, Putin was going to quit at the Ukraine. Well, the Ukrainian people, they had a different opinion on that. Uh, there are uh, six that uh, is bigger than the nine on their side because they have heart and guts. But they also have women and children who are laying dead in the streets, being raped uh, and murdered and burned. That's from the retreating uh, Russian soldiers who whose mothers would truly be ashamed of them, I'm sure. So I, I do not believe that you should operate your daily life out of fear. That's just not the way to do it. But I was always taught the best defense is a good offense. And I, I have lived in that. I've walked in that my whole life. And my, uh, my parents uh, sent me to uh, study judo. And, uh, and because uh, the only fighter between my mom and my dad who could fight was my mom. And, uh, and she could fight. She is a farm girl. And uh, of course, my dad was a farm guy, but he, he, he didn't fight. But the reason that I was sent to learn how to fight was that I could protect them. And we, we grew up in a tourist community, a little place called Wasega Beach on Georgian Bay. And trust me when I say the occasion arose. So is the occasion going to arise for the Polish people who are being taught through government funded education for a family at home to study? How do you react? What do you take if, you're, if your country's being um, invaded? What steps do you do in order to make sure that your children have a uh, food and water, a shelter, uh, warm clothing, um, appropriate sleeping bags, etc. All that, excuse me, all that sort of stuff. What, what personal armament uh, should a family in Poland have? Well, they should have a lot more than what we're allowed to have in Canada. When, when I was a kid growing up, um, uh, the lessons of the day encompass this. If a government can limit the amount of armament that the average uh, Canadian is allowed to have, then you know the government knows who has, because of registration and all that crap, who has armament? Who should they be wary of? Because something happens to politicians when they get into power. Uh, it, it, again, goes back to when I was a kid. Uh, politicians behave themselves well until they realize that they themselves can vote themselves a raise. And then the distance between the politician and the people becomes enhanced greater. So I am going to try to access on internet uh, through Fox News, because that's what I saw it on, um, uh, an English version of that uh, game plan, that tutorial, that teaching, that book that teaches the people what to know, what documentation to have with them, what food to have in reserve. We're not talking about a run on Costco, okay? What we're talking about is an attentiveness to uh, how many days food do you have in the cupboards? 
um, do you order out a lot, order in or whatever you want to call it? Uh, well, what if your phone doesn't work? What if electricity, uh, what if, say, Russia uh, goes to work on our grid system? Like, like, it's not to be afraid, children. It's to be, as I grew up, anticipating what could go in the toilet and then what would I do uh, to protect my family. In our campground, we had, a, we had a big campground at Wasega Beach. Dear Lord, we had 325 campsites if you jammed the place. It was 200 foot across and 3,000 foot long. And uh, that's how all us kids learned how to back up so well because we could run the, the campground truck, car, anytime we wanted, anytime. But Dad said... Uh, he said a few th smart things. I'll give him credit for them. Easier now than when I was younger. And uh, he said, you can drive anything. Just don't turn around. So if you drove from the front of the camp to the back of the camp, it was 3,000 feet. But he said, you have to back all the way up to the front. You're not allowed to turn that, that thing around. And he was teaching in, in his own way. He was teaching us uh, a lesson on how to drive. The Polish government is teaching their people a tutorial, a teaching on how to survive if things go to hell in a handbasket. I like that saying. Does that mean it will? Well, over there, if we were over there, uh, well, I think the odds are are stacked against uh, peace. Okay. So, but that does not mean it is the same here. But the same lessons can be beneficial for us. Determine before uh, if if you had to evacuate, what do you take with you? What do you take with you in order to protect your children and all those things? Hey, I don't want people going out and buying guns. Plus they're legal. Legal. Okay. Okay. God bless. Uh, you have a good day. And uh, I'll try to think of what else I can do to wreck your day. <laughs> it's not my intent. It's really not. God bless, eh? God bless.